<laughs> Sorry, guys. We had a bit of a, an internet issue. Yeah. It was, um, yeah, my, uh, is that right? Over a little bit more. It's just me. It's like, it's the Stacy show. Sorry, guys. We were having a bit of an internet issue. So, um, yeah, solved. just had to, it's all solved under control. It's just, we're from Australia and, um, our internet's, yeah, internet's not, internet's backwards. not the best thing that's ever happened. Okay. So are we recording? We're, we're going to start to again. We're start recording. <sighs> Honestly. Yeah. I choose to start the story now. Hi, I'm Carly. And I'm Stacey. And you're listening to Sweet Teen Club, the podcast for all of us who can't leave the nannies behind. So this week we are going to be talking about book 11 of the Sweet Valley High series. This is the one that is called Too Good to Be True and it is indeed about a girl who is too good to be true. It is. So uh, at the end of book 10 it was announced that one of Mr. Wakefield's friends from college was going to send his daughter over uh, from New York to Sweet Valley. She wanted a holiday or something. I don't know. Um, so it turns out that they were going to do like a kid exchange and one of the twins was going to go to New York and the other one was going to host young, uh, Suzanne, Suzanne, Suzanne yeah. Devlin. I struggle with Susan and Suzanne. So I'm like, is it, I, I get her confused with the other chick who lived in Europe that was Todd's girlfriend. Ah, uh, yeah. Can't remember her name. Um, so Suzanne, um, has wanted to come to Sweet Valley for some time and, they have to decide which twin is going to New York and which twin will be hosting young Suzanne. Now, Suzanne is very sophisticated. She's absolutely beautiful. She's lived all over the world. She's got a little Porcelain bit of Porcelain skin like a doll. A little bit of a British accent. She's... Because classy. Because, of course. I think she lived in Paris for a while. So, she's very uh, upper class and absolutely, you know, so glamorous. A world away from Sweet Valley, really. So it, the book starts basically with um, the dad, Mr. Wakefield, trying to choose which twin goes to New York. And in typical Jessica style, because she's a bitch, she manages to just manipulate Elizabeth by kind of going, look over there, oh, I'm going to New York. And that's kind of it's how actually, that happens. Uh, the first thing I take issue with in this book, and there are many. Uh, Stacey uh, has a lot of problems with this excuse book. Excuse me while she's, I get my list out. She's very angry. I, I'm also very angry, but not anywhere near as angry as Stacey. And you read it um, a little bit earlier than I yeah, did. I, I literally read it yesterday on the treadmill. And I think if you check my Snapchat... You'd I find, didn't see that. How good yeah. is reading on the treadmill? Oh my god, it was so good. I it was can't fabulous. Listen to I mean, I can and I it dictated my notes, so some of them are very funny. Oh, that's great. Mine are mostly in caps because I'm just annoyed as fuck. <laughs> so Stacey's very angry, and she had longer to get angry about it because she read it further yeah, I read ago, it a few months than, ago than I did. I don't remember reading this one as a kid. I think th this was my face. I don't know if you can see. Elizabeth's face is me, is my face this entire fucking book. But also look at her hair. I'm sorry for the podcast listeners, but her hair is just off chops, out of control. It really is. She's got like man curtains. She's got the 90s man well, curtains happening. she's got the lavalier. Happening. We've got the lavalier. Happening. Did you catch And the lavalier, the lavalier is actually a major plot point in this book as Isn't well. It's the it first really time is. it's really taken its own sort of... Uh, storyline. So Jess ends up going to New York. Let me tell you why though. How Jessica does this because Mr. Wakefield actually tosses a coin because it's the most logical thing to do when two people are fighting over something. Um, and Jess loses. And Elizabeth wins. And Jess, like, I think I've even written that she actually chucks a tantrum and is wailing. She's wailing. She's wailing. She's wailing. A 16-year-old girl who's, who can't go to New York. Sorry, we've got a question. I need to know your snap handle. Oh, Let's... I'm at Stactron. <laughs> because... Stactron? You, well, it's a long story. How do you story. spell that? Like Stactron? S-T-A-C-K-T-R-O-N. <laughs> it's a long story. But uh, when my husband and I first got together... My name is Stacy, and we lived in a share house. And a friend of mine, well, he wasn't my friend, but he was my new friend, walked past and he's like, said good day to us because he just came in from work. He's like, Maddie, Stuckers. And I'm like, he's just called me Stuckers. And that became my nickname from then on. When I first got Twitter back in the day, I went to get Stuckers and some bastard already had it. So I chose Stuckron. 
And then nice. I had then I had Veggie Mama for my blog because it's because it, uh, Snapchat's connected to no that's Periscope is connected uh, to Twitter. But I was anyone think, there when like the last time we did this and we went on Periscope and it was the worst thing oh, that it was ever terrible. happened. Like, was it was horrible. Tense. So when I started Snapchat, that was never going to be a blog thing. That was just going to be a personal thing. Yeah. And you can't change your username. Yeah. So I'm Stacktron. I'm I'm Carly Jacobs. So, but my, my thing comes up as Smaggle. So please follow both of us on Snapchat. We've got another question. Rachel remembers reading this 20 years ago. Oh, hi, Rachel. We, uh, well, you might not have been as horrified by the storyline back then it as It changes I am now. everything when Mid-30s. you reread it as an adult. It's Mid-30s, just... you just want to punch everybody. It's just horrific. Really? So, so we'll move on okay, to so it. Okay, so Jessica's wailing, like absolutely wailing, like, like, like screaming bawling. like a two-year-old who's dropped a sandwich that she can't go to New York. And, um, so they're in, like, Elizabeth and Jessica are in Elizabeth's room and they're talking about packing and doing other things. And she's like, oh, Elizabeth, you know, it's going to be such a long time while you're gone. And Elizabeth's like, yeah, no, it's going to be something new. I'm really excited. You know, it might help, um, my writing. I'll have new ideas. And then Jessica's like, oh, but what about Todd while you're gone? So many women in Sweet Valley that would love to have Todd. She's like, they're going to put their mouths on his mouth. And how are you going to cope with that? Lila is is like, I can't wait till Elizabeth's out of the picture. I'm going to be so on top of Todd. Lila's there like, it's all a lie. Waiting for her to leave town. It's all a lie. But she's like, Todd will cheat on you. If you've gone to New York. And, and then it's like, oh, I can't have that. I yeah. better stay. And then Elizabeth is like, hot Todd is my main thing that I love the most in the world. So obviously I'm going to give up this amazing opportunity. And then, I'm with him every fucking day. Exactly. And then Jessica's like, tapping out, bye. And then she's like, oh, well, Elizabeth to... had Elizabeth hadn't quite said, Jess, you can go in place of me. But she was like, oh, yeah, I don't really want to leave Todd. And then one of my because, favorite, you know, I might come back to no boyfriend because what kind of relationship is this? Which would obviously be horrifying. And then my favorite line in this was when she goes, um, oh no, I think Elizabeth says to Jessica, this is before she, Jessica's decided she's going to, um, New York. Right. She goes, you can wear my new culottes while you're away. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe you can wear my culottes. I'm like, culottes. And I'm going, okay, culottes are gross. Cool. And then, and then she follows up with, they look better on you anyway. Hashtag twin jokes. That's my favorite. They're always just like, they look exactly, they look the, exactly, exactly the same. They make all these cool stupid, up. like, we look the same, but we don't look the same. But ha 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 jokes. They drive me fucking mental. Smuggle I hate readers, them. Do you pronounce it culottes? What do you say? I say culottes. No, but, oh, no, but in America they say culottes. Oh, well, true. Yeah. Fair yeah. Right. I'd say culottes. I wouldn't say, with... say culottes. But no, it's, 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 it's the American pronunciation, the cue Speaking of Snapchat, can we Snapchat this anger? Yeah, absolutely. Super angry. I'll keep going. Yes. Um, so my other favorite thing was when Jessica decides that she's going to New York and she's having this like fantasy in her head about what's going to happen when she goes to New York. And she goes, I'll be at one of those impossibly trendy Manhattan discos. And then Mick Jagger will walk up to me and say, I believe this next dance is mine. Like Mick Jagger. What a thing to fantasize about. Like he was already a hundred back then. Exactly. And also what the fuck happened to Burt Reynolds? I thought he was the hot guy on the block. Do you remember though when, when Elizabeth was like the hottest guy on the West coast is taking me to the dance. No, Todd says to Elizabeth, the hottest guy on the West coast. And she's like, who Burt Reynolds? Yeah, and then in 2008 it changed to Jake Gyllenhaal. I'm like, they're just shocking. Oh sure my there's god, guys in Jake Gyllenhaal. Like, no disrespect. To yeah, Jack. yeah, but I mean, can can we pop a Chris Hemsworth in there? I mean, really, I wouldn't have even gone that far. Um, oh, and then Elizabeth says, "You may have New York, but remember, I have Todd." And Stacey's written here, "Actual bar." I was so annoyed at that. Like, it's fucking New York or Vanilla Milkshake Todd Wilkins. She picks vanilla milkshake Todd Wilkins. Oh, we were going to spend some time over the holidays together. It'd be a real shame to miss out on that. Yeah, I'm sure it would. Cause it's oh, we've got another comment from Leonie. I'm as old as dirt and I don't even want to meet Mick Jagger. He's <laughs> so old. That's our thoughts exactly. If I was in a New York nightclub, he's not the first person I would think but of. But even, even when he was really young, he just was never... He was, like, a, not what I would call a dream boat. Like, I'm into weird-looking dudes. Like, Benedict Same. Cumberbatch is no, my chocolate. Davey Havoc is... Yeah, we're into weird-looking dudes. But Mick Jagger just objectively is not a particularly fuckable man. 
I'd rather go with uh, Keith Richards, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah. If, if we're going to go that department. Oh, and then on page 16, Elizabeth, as Jessica's leaving, she goes, bye, say hi to King Kong for me. And I'm like, you have the worst sense of humor of anyone in Sweet Valley. She really does. She, she tries to she, joke and it's just like... She's made two jokes <laughs> in, 11, in 11 books. In 11 books. In 11 books. <laughs> yeah. She's made two jokes and one of them I've laughed at. But my sister's actually in New York at the moment. Um... And she's like, oh, I'm going to the Empire State Building. And I said, say hi to King Kong. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, then I showed her a picture of me and King Kong, but she wouldn't get it. She didn't read it. Oh, Leonie said, I'm a 60s gal, and believe me, we drooled over Paul McCartney. Yeah, you can have Paul McCartney. He's yeah, super fucking old. I would have drooled over him. Yeah, definitely. I think I was more of probably a John Lennon gal. Yeah, I would have I would have definitely beefed the John. Um, um, yeah, but he's... Mick Jagger? Just no. Even in 1984 when this book was written. So after Elizabeth's terrible King Kong joke, uh, Suzanne arrives and she's friendly and enthusiastic and glamorous and everyone loves her. Well, she's very tall and very sophisticated. sophisticated. And, she, you know, she's gliding through the airport and Elizabeth's like, I've never seen anything like this And she's wearing life. a backless dress in yeah, anticipation the of the California heat. Yes, but she was also like, oh, I'm so white compared to you. And Elizabeth's like, oh, it's all right. You know, it doesn't take long to get brown in this place. Because being white's the worst thing yeah, that could ever happen. Yeah, is it's, it's so important. It's like a currency in Sweet Valley. Um, so, and this is also the beginnings of when we see Stephen having issues with Trisha or Tricia, as we like to call her. Um, Poor so he, Tricia. he's dating this girl who's from the wrong side of the tracks. Her dad's an alcoholic and, um, her sister's, her sister's in and out of trouble. And then Jessica says she's either going to be pregnant or in jail in the next year. So Jess is, she's actually offered. wrong because, um, we won't ruin the next book, but. Neither of those things happen. No. Um, so uh, Trisha, she's been very distant with Stephen. And this is all very strange if you've read uh, Confidential, Confidential because Stephen's gay. So everything that I read now about his girl relationships, I'm like, eh. I mean, I know that people can. Well, I just, I Stephen being gay was never going to be a storyline. Mm-mm. And they've never written in any of the 187 books that have many there is. They've never written that as an eventuality. No. He was never going to be gay. So, yeah. I, I, it's one of those... I it's just, so weird. It was just... One of the things I took issue with. Yeah, yeah, like that was just ridiculous. And so it's, it's actually just cheapened every other book before that one because it's just it's such a ridiculous storyline. Um, so, yeah, and so the, the Trisha uh, Martin stuff is happening. Um, Suzanne and Liz go swimming, and Suzanne is perfect without an ounce of fat on her. The realisticness of that... Is that a word? Is <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it is. Pretty much zero because, I mean, I'm skinny as fuck and I'm pretty sure that there's something on, like there would have to be at least an ounce yeah. of fat. So not only are girls reading this book about Elizabeth and Jessica who are perfect size six figures, which later on they end up being size four, um, but also like they're absolutely perfect. Everyone in Sweet Valley except for Chubby Robin Wilson yeah. is absolutely perfect. And then here comes beautiful, sophisticated, glamorous Suzanne, who New everybody Yorker. wants to be like. Absolutely even more perfect than the twins. If you like, can no even one's that. normal. Um, yeah, exactly. There's no, like, normal people. And there's no, like, average-looking girls. You're either Chubby Robin. No, wait, someone... Who was average? Um, oh, Caroline Pierce, they say, is average. No, they say she's chubby. Caroline Pierce? Yeah, they think Caroline Pierce is, like... Oh, Paul out. There was one of the ones where she was gaining a bit of weight, I think. So, well, Elis Jessica? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Jessica. Someone fuck, calls her a pig later on. I can't remember. Yeah, the word. yeah. Um, but I think Enid, Enid's like girl next door kind of pretty. Mm. And I don't think they necessarily play up Olivia's prettiness. I think they're just like, she's quite hippie and bohemian. Yeah. Um, Kara's gorgeous. Lila's gorgeous. Yeah, like everybody else. Amy's gorgeous. Is gorgeous. Regina, model, mm -hmm. gorgeous. Mm -hmm. There's no average girls in, in the Sweet no. Valley. Um, we wouldn't have lasted a day in the group. No, God, no. Oh, I reckon you would have been in the droids if you were Yeah, I would have been Emily Mayer. <laughs> yeah, you totally would have been. The resident goth. Um, so where, where were we up to? Um, so we're up to after Liz looks at Suzanne, who's perfect swimmer with a perfect body. 
Um, and Liz starts getting self-conscious about her own body, her own perfect body. Her own perfect body. Her own perfect body. And this is like a brand new experience for Elizabeth because ordinarily she's like the hottest one and she's like, oh my God, my body is as perfect. Yeah, but Liz doesn't normally get caught up in looks. No. Like she's more interested in, you know, Olivia's non-fracking <laughs> protest skills rather than, you know, how she looks in a bikini. So, um... She says to her, oh my gosh, just in such good shape. I bet even your boyfriend has a hard time keeping up with you because, you know, men are always fitter than women. Like, what the actual was that? It's like, oh, you know, I was so angry reading that. I'm yeah, just kind can, of going, can you not, not screw you. Can she not just swim without giving a fuck about what her boyfriend thinks? Yeah, exactly. I, I, we're, we're so, I just I'm actually so think, like, I'm a feminist every day in real life. But when I read these books, I become an irrational feminist. I get, no! Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm not even a child read this! <laughs> Which is why I was thinking of selling my large collection after this. So that Abby doesn't get her hands on them too soon. Because <laughs> I'll be like, so have you read this bit yet? Because I really need to talk to you about that. <laughs> so she said she's got a perfect body. I really need to talk to you about that. Okay, so Suzanne loves to drop into the conversation that she lives, you know, a Manhattanite socialite life. So her boyfriend is mega rich. They zip around New York in his Ferrari because he's, what, 16 with a Ferrari. It's also, that's just such a ghost writer of the 80s yeah. fancy car to put in. Yeah. Like, if, if they had to give them the brief that they couldn't use Ferrari, I bet they would have really struggled to have come up with what another can fancy. say now? Um, that he owns a building. So, he also, they also take moonlight sails on his father's yacht. Um, she goes to debutante balls and skiing in Aspen. I can't take Aspen seriously ever since Dumb and Dumber. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> so I just lol every time that happens. So at the Wakefield, so see, Suzanne isn't sort of like the snobby rich girl. She's super nice and she's helping people and she's so excited that Elizabeth has made her like a pie for dinner. Yeah, she gets really excited she's about She's wanting the to pie. wash the dishes. She's trying to vacuum the house. Yeah. Like she's trying to be... And they're like fully frothing at, at each other about yeah. like how much they're loving each so other. Like, and You're awesome. No, you're awesome. Oh, stop it. I feel like we're sisters immediately. Oh my God, this is so amazing. It's, so, it's actually kind of a bit of a pain in the ass, these two kind of loving each other sick. Yeah, it's almost like too good to be true. Yeah, exactly. So the next day is going to be a school picnic. And Elizabeth has to get up early because she's mega involved in every goddamn school. She has to like go on, I don't know, like chop shit. And... Be, be Elizabeth at the yeah. school picnic. So Winston and just about every single boy at Sweet Valley High has shown up at the picnic caught one look at Suzanne and lost their goddamn minds. They're like, she's so hot, we can't survive. And all the boys are just gagging for Even it and, like, Bruce, following her around. Like, Even Bruce, Bruce yeah. Bruce is normally really so, like, the women will come to me. I yeah. Chase but he's, women. like, trotting around after Susan just he's being, like, saying, Suzanne being, saying like... stuff to her and, you know, being gross. Um, and Mr. Collins shows up at the party. Um, and Suzanne is out in the middle of the lake where they've gone for the school barbecue or whatever it is. And after swimming perfect laps the day before, is now suddenly, help, All of a sudden, I'm just can't. In, in, the, in the lake yeah. where nothing's happening, I'm drowning. And she's like, oh, I don't know, I, I can't swim anymore, oh no. But see, I don't know, well, Mr. Collins swims out to help her. And I'm not sure how she would know that he was a Oh, we're getting some comments, before. guys. We've got from okay. Siobhan. Old oh, bugger would love to watch the whole episode, but I have to walk my dogs and listen to podcasts without visuals. <laughs> oh, I love Siobhan. I went to high school with Siobhan. Hi. Yeah. Thanks for commenting. I'm so excited. You can um, totally watch this video while And we've walking. also got, yeah, watch it while you're walking, dude. Just like pop it in. You can just listen to us while you're, while you're walking around. We've also got Kerry who's just said all these names are coming back to me. How weird is it when you hear Bruce, all of it? Yeah. yeah. Lila. Yeah. Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins. So Mr. The Collins. The Robert Redford lookalike. Everyone's favorite. So Mr. Collins swims out um, and saves Suzanne, even though she swam perfect laps like the day before and um, she's clinging to him like the perfect dancer yeah, in distress and she's like oh my goodness I, just, I feel so weak can you please just hold me and he's trying to put her down and she's like no I love you and I've won't. never asked somebody to hold me no me neither oh my god that's, so that's like a soapy thing to say I actually had a uh, like a, a friend of a friend, like I've met him like twice and we were at a pub and he was just having like a particularly bad day and he asked me for a hug oh. he said he needed a hug and I was like, I can do that, but this is a little weird. 
Yeah, you kind of want to hug from somebody who wants to reciprocate the hug. Yeah. I'm not often a hug reciprocator. I do. Oh, Kerry them. says she remembers this bit. How good was oh, this, this bit? The, the rescue. So, yeah, just forever, she, forever teaching women how to. Damsel in the skin. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Mr. Collins is like distinctly uncomfortable with Suzanne's behavior, and he's just like, you know, uh, I'm just, I'm just gonna be over here. Get yourself and he's like trying to get her off him because she's clinging to him. Yeah, but oh. I also wanted to know why the hell Mr. Collins was there in the first place. Like, if this wasn't a school organized thing, it was just a tradition that the kids did together. Yeah, it didn't need to be chaperoned. Like, hey guys, I'm so cool. I'm I gonna know. hang out with you. Can like, you the imagine of that? Is like, pretty slim. Can you imagine organizing a barbecue for your mates when you're 16 and like your doofus teacher? Showing up like oh my god! Uh -oh, you've been busted for stealing a dress off Nikki. No, oh I know. Buy her another one. Katrina, Carly, I recognize that dress. I wonder if Nikki misses it. Yeah, I actually I bought her a new one. So sorry, guys. For, for, I haven't seen it in real life. Yeah. So people who are watching, people like uh, are this this um. So people who are listening, the story about this dress is that I borrowed it from Nikki from Styling You when I was um going to her. We were doing a little blog big in Brisbane. Oh, that's right. And she was like, oh, wear this dress, wear this dress. And then I wore it and I loved it. But also. So I'm a Melbourne girl mm -hmm. and I went to Brisbane and it was like 35 degrees and I sweated on it so badly that I was like, I can't return this dress to you. It's that. gross, but also I want to keep it. So I stole it. What brand is it? Uh, it's Bohemian Traders, but you can, I, you can't buy it in her current store. No. If you're buying anything from the store, store, you have to be really quick. In oh. the Bohemian Traders store? Oh, Bohemian Traders. The Raglan? Oh, nice. Yes, nice. I absolutely love it. Um, you can still buy this on Bohemian, but you can't buy it on Nikki. If you want to buy something from Nikki's store, you have to be really freaking quick. I don't think it's BT because I have been... Oh, is it not? No, 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 it is, but yeah. I don't think you can buy it on the store. Oh, bugger. But yeah, it's really comfy she gets and, really fast. and lovely. She's got to move quick. Katrina was like, you were very hot that day. I was. I was not happy. It was, it was not, it was not a good climate situation for me. No, and I've actually got... been in a room with Carly and it's like <sighs> slightly warmer than average and she's just like fanning cope. herself. And also this this address has a keyhole cut out in I was the actually back. Eyeing it off so it's if you quick. hug someone and it's really sweaty, their hand ends up right on their right on the sweat patch on my back. And I drip with sweat. Like yeah. I'm I'm a gross sweaty girl. Yeah. And Every time someone went to hug me, I was just like, oh my God, I'm Please so don't. sorry. Please don't do that. Like, I did that gonna... with somebody on their hands now. I'm like, oh, and put my arm oh. on their arm. I'm like, oh. <laughs> you just, you felt what I, that was, this, this, this is uh, awkward. And I'm like, oh, it's so nice to see you. Oh, <laughs> gross. Yeah, no, I didn't really do very well with that. So anyway, if I was drowning in a lake, I'd probably want Mr. Collins to save me. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, who doesn't want... Robert Redford to save them. Um, so yeah, so Mr. Right. Collins was there and shouldn't have been there. Anyway, meanwhile, in New York, Jess has just met yes. Su Suzanne's boyfriend, Pete. Well, she has been taken home from the airport by the Devlins and their absent parents. Yeah. They're not interested in Jessica whatsoever. They're probably not even interested in their own kid. The mother is offensively slim and smokes She just smokes skinny, all the time and does brown eat. cigarettes. I'm really interested in these skinny brown cigarettes. They sound like those Indonesian ones that smell like yeah. strawberries. Or those like nobody... cigars, those cigarellos. Yes. Back in the day when they yes. smoke. Yeah, back in the day. So she's not feeling particularly welcome in New York and she also doesn't really know what to do while she's there. So, um, Suzanne's boyfriend, Pete, the one with the Ferrari, has come over. I think he's bought something over. And she's like, hi. Tickets. Tickets for the concert. That's right. And so he had tickets to take Suzanne to a concert, but she left and didn't in, tell him. No. And then he was like, maybe Felicia and whatever the dad's name is. Mr. And Mr. Devlin. And Jessica just couldn't believe that he had called the parents by their first name because you always said Oh, I know. She's like, you know. White bread, Sweet Valley. Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. All the way. Mr. and Mrs. Wakefield. People aren't even divorced in Sweet Valley. Um, so he comes over and he's got tickets to like a composer, some kind of musical pianist doobie, and he's like, uh, Horowitz. Yeah, and he's like, do you do you, do you want to go? And Jessica's like, oh my god, I love him. You know, like in Clueless. It's like I'm um, into like the like, like, holiday. She's like, I love. I him. love him. So he's like, uh, okay, I'll take out this kid to uh, the pianist. So Jessica gets mega excited. She yeah. takes hours to get ready. Like hours, hours and hours and hours. Hours. And she's going to wear some kind of like white, white dress. White, white dress. It looks much like this one. Um, 
And she's like, nah, you know what, fuck that. He's so sophisticated and he's so New York and he's so peaked that she puts on one of, like, Suzanne, who's only 16, one of her uh, crepe cocktail dresses, which is very plunging and very revealing. She's like, oh, my God, I look at least 19. Now, this young man is half an hour late and she is on the verge of tears. She's going to cry because he's goddamn half an hour late. She's super excited. Um, it's like she's got nothing else to do in yeah. her life but wait around for dudes. And it's also like, and come dress on, like woman, you're in New York. Like, I could very happily go to New York and, and not bang. ever talk to another person while yeah. I'm there. Well, they won't talk to you when you're there. No, like, it just... No, New Yorkers will. Every time I'm in New York, New No, Yorkers I spoke to like, someone on the phone and I needed help and she was such a bitch. I was like, fuck you. No, when I was in New York, everyone was just like, oh my God, you're from Australia. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. I had to actually do the Pledge of Allegiance in some kind of supermarket. And people people like, it was like, it's the token Australian. Let's make it do weird shit. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just here to buy deodorant. Um, um, so one of the things that really shut us off about this book was how Jess was going straight after Paige and yeah, she so rationalizes that, that it. that it's Suzanne's boyfriend. I've never met her. Yeah, she's like, I don't know her. Who cares? Like, whatever. Like, like fair game. Yeah. The, the, the disloyalty that the girls show to each other and to their friends and to women, indeed, that in they've general. never met mm. is horrible. I think this just... So another beef that I have with Sweet Valley in general is that it just feeds this horrible thing that women are really competitive and women mm. actually aren't. We're only competitive because people tell us we're competitive. Yeah. Well, to be honest, when I had my kids, I was so worried that I would take them to a supermarket and some old biddy was going to give me a dressing down or I was going to meet judgy mums or, you know, mums in the playground were going to be awful to me. You know what? I've had nothing but lovely mums in the last five years I've been a parent. Yeah. No one's ever given me shit at the supermarket. I don't know how I've missed it because I know it does happen. Yeah. But I think the stereotype that someone's judging my lunchbox um, and it's going to be horrible to me. Don't point your avocado at me. Oh my god, that was the <laughs> best blog post ever. If you haven't read this, you have to read it. Such it's just a good such, blog post. It's a beautiful picture of the way that women think that we think about each other, but we actually don't. You explain it so much yeah. better. No, it's just that we assume that people are judging us when they're actually not. So there was a woman who was feeding her daughter um, just probably in an organic avocado. Yeah, this perfectly right avocado. avocado in a food court. And the mum, the mum who was watching Glennon, Glennon, from... Glennon Doyle Melton. And um, she was like looking at this woman going, how dare you show off that you are feeding your child a beautiful avocado and I'm just giving my kid McDonald's. You know, stop showing off to me. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it wasn't even that. She was probably just feeding her kid an avocado and not giving a shit about anybody exactly. else. Exactly. But we assume that someone's going to the gym at us. Or they're yeah. dieting at us. And they're doing it to make us feel yeah, or bad. Or they're dating an amazing guy at, at us. And they're doing it to make us feel yeah. bad. So it's, it's this beautiful thing. And the, and the whole... the, the no one's doing that. The blog post is called Don't Point Your Avocado At Me. Yeah. And it's so true. Like, anytime I see someone existing beautifully and I'm just kind of like, oh, I hate you a bit for that. I just remind she's myself... She's not like waking up every day going, how can I piss Carly off? Exactly. And I just I always know, remind I myself... <laughs> And I'll take a picture of it on my Instagram to my 20 million followers. Exactly. So if you're ever feeling like that, like that horrible kind of like, are oh, you doing this just to annoy me? You just have to remind yourself that no one's pointing they're their avocado at you. Not. I mean, there are probably a couple that are pointing their avocado at you. Just, just but you know what? Them. Men point avocados as well. So let's not just. No, no, I totally agree mm. with that. But I do think that there is more of a stereotype of the catfight, mm -hmm. bitchy woman than I've actually I'm the same. experienced as an adult. As a teenager, it was more bitchy people than there was normal mm. people. Um, but as an adult, I've actually found that people are pretty normal. We've yeah. all got shit that we're going and through. I, and we've I know that I've... And I've to bear. And I've, we, we have both definitely been warned more about Hmm. women being bitchy than we've ever actually, actually experienced. experienced that and now. it's shit like this, Sweet Valley High, mm -hmm. that has made us expect that, and we've been pleasantly surprised. Well, to be nice. honest, Jessica said, I don't know this girl. I owe her nothing. I don't care if it's her boyfriend. I find him attractive, so I'm going to go right for it. Um, and she said, uh, what Suzanne doesn't know won't hurt her. And even at the end, when, you know, Elizabeth finds out that Jessica was trying to date Pete. She was like, oh, 
I've just had yeah. a fight, so I don't give a shit what you do. And we're just so like, cool, you, guys. There, have no, no morals. Yeah, don't there's even no worry point where it. someone steps in and goes, you know what? That's actually not cool. That is someone else's boyfriend. Back the fuck up. But no, Jessica puts on her, her sexy dress and, and wants him to kiss her, but he's not interested in her and she cannot stand she it. She can't handle it when dudes are not interested in her. It's just, it's not a thing that she's into. So she can't speak around him. Like every no. time he shows up, she's just like a blubbering idiot. Um, so and he treats her like a kid. They go out on their date. Yeah. Oh, hang on. We've got a comment from Rachel saying Don't that's put a your avocado at me. <laughs> it's such a great hashtag. It is a really good hashtag. I will link to that um, blog post in the show notes. I do think yeah. everyone needs to read it. It's that very good. The spectacles blog post. Yeah, I think that's it's a really good thing. So we, we should definitely start the hashtag. Don't put your, Don't put your avocado, avocado at me. me. It is so good for getting out of your own head. You know yeah. how you were telling me today that you read that um, research where people think about the people that they love. Less than half an hour a day. In a whole day. So the person you love the most, they did a a whole study on it and they counted up all the times that they thought about the person that they love the most and it equaled in most people less than half an hour a day. And then they want you to apply that to people who who don't like you, who probably aren't thinking about you half as much as you think they are. And it's basically nothing. So the next time you're thinking about... Someone Something who's... embarrassing that you've done or somebody that you've upset. Like the likelihood that they're sitting there spending their whole day bitching about you. No one's thinking about it. Blame. It's not a thing. No. Actually, uh, Dr. Phil says something that... Um, I he's... love Dr. Phil. He's my guru. Me too. So he says something that his dad said to him. He said, you wouldn't worry about what people thought of you if you realized how seldom they did. Yeah. Like it's so true. They really don't ever think about you that much even if they really do hate you exactly even if you have made a stupid fool out of yourself like they'll probably laugh at you for a day and then they'll move on with their lives they've got shit to worry about they've got bills to pay they've got kids to feed you know they're not sitting around thinking oh my god smuggling a sweaty fucking dress (laughs) that's all the likelihood is so slim so Rebecca's just said to write, holy moly. I'm not sure what that was to but we're giving you a thumbs up we love Beck. she's got that wonderful blog the plummet I freaking I didn't know that was you and yes, that's just blown my Beck. mind. I love Beck. I send my dad lots of her articles because he's a plumber Ra. as well. Hi Ra! Oh and my Auntie Karen. Hi Karen. Hi Karen. That's my mum's younger sister. I love her. She's wonderful. Hi. That's fantastic. This is so exciting. Um, yeah, so Rebecca, I send my dad lots of her articles because he's a plumber as well. And my dad always wanted me to be a plumber. And he keeps talking to me about it. He's like, if only you'd have taken over the family business, <laughs> you'd be rolling in it now. I'm like, I probably would. From Rachel. Love Beck, love and, Beck and her blog. blog. Oh, this is so nice. You know, oh. Beck is also one of the most supportive, beautiful people in the blogosphere. She really is. She's she, such a darling. I love it when she stops by my blog. I, I like also, special. we actually met at Pro Blogger many years ago and she was breastfeeding her baby in the oh, toilet. And that's how we baby. met. Yes. She was such a tiny little Oh, baby. Beck's lolling at us. We'll just get back to, we'll get back to the, back to the thing. Yeah. You got, okay. we'll, we'll obviously Sorry. keep coming back to comments as well. So, I've cracked that Jessica is nearly in tears after being waiting half an hour. I'm like, two hours yeah. maybe you'd be like, I've wasted all this makeup. Also, he's a New Yorker. He's on borrowed time anyway. He's on New York it's, time. Yeah. No one's ever, no one's ever um, on time there. So, the date goes super badly. He treats her like she's a kid. She's desperate for him to just make out with her. I don't know where she's going with, with any of that. But anyway... Um, he drops her off and she's like, he's treated me like shit this whole time. He's paid zero attention to me. He's laughed at me because I didn't know who the pianist was. Now he might kiss me when he drops me off. Yay! And because like, even assholes are good to impress. No, but she has not understood the signs that he has given her. Yeah. And she's just still like, well, I'll write that off that he's done and I'll write that off that he's done and I hope that he still makes out with me when he drops me off. And he doesn't because he's just not that interested in her yeah and she's devastated and humiliated and furious when he drops her off without kissing her so i'm devastated and furious but you know what story, like, like like if i was in high school and there was a guy i was interested in and he didn't want to kiss I'd me i'd be upset i would be sad nervous. i wouldn't be angry like no. I, I would be like oh that's obviously because i'm an ugly loser i wouldn't be like screw yeah, you totally i'm amazing <laughs> i'm like exactly. i'm lucky 
lucky he took me out. This in is the actually third place. this is really interesting because when I was in New York, we're talking a lot about New York this time. But um, I so re- we did in confidential. <laughs> yeah, the amount of times I said so. This is in New York. Um, but I was we were walking through Central Park one day, and I walked past these two women, and they were walking next to each other. And one of the women was telling her about this breakup that she's had, and we were right behind them for quite some time. And she was saying, "You know what? It's his loss. I am confident. I am beautiful. I am successful." And she walked past me, and I was I just kind of going, that. "I was kind of going, that's awesome, and so not how Australians deal with breakups. Oh no, I would never. We get drunk that. and sleep with other people, and I feel bad for I ourselves. I've been for like a year after one breakup. Yeah, exactly. I was just like, that's a way healthier way of dealing with a breakup. But I was just, but if can you imagine if an Australian woman said that but after I think, a breakup? I think it's like our national identity to just like take the piss out of shit, including ourselves. Exactly, and also so to, talk to, to talk ourselves up and and to be confident. People will go, you know, oh, she's so up herself. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. And you, so you don't want to be up yourself. Exactly, yeah. So you take the piss out of yourself, and this is where we end up. See, so yeah, mm. I thought that was really interesting. I was kind of going, wow, no one would like hearing that in Australia. But no. go you after your breakup. No, I think like, that's fabulous. Also, going for a run after a breakup. I'm like, Australian girls would run. just be hungover. And- I remember wanting to run. Like, not to run as to be healthy, but just like run, and like to outrun my problems. Mm. Just like run until I collapse. But back in Sweet Valley, uh, Liz isn't running anywhere. No. no. Nor is she doing anything, but her lavalier has gone missing. The lavalier. Drama of the century. If anyone Lavalier's knows, again, what the fuck a lavalier what a, is. What the fuck a lavalier is. We've been through this so many times. If anyone, we've Googled it. They appear to not be a thing. We obviously know they're a necklace, but where the actual term lavalier comes from. I've Googled lavalier. Don't try and do it. She's trying to Google lavalier. It's it's not a thing. Um, I so, don't know so Jessica calls Liz and she's like pretending that everything's awesome and tells her about this fantastic new guy that she's met and how great it is. And one of the things that really struck me hardcore about this one was that, um, I was like, Elizabeth was saying that the call from Jessica would have been really expensive and it would have been. Remember when calling people from overseas was like super they even super said, expensive like, how much yeah. is this phone call costing you she's like mm. she's like i don't know the they're rich. can afford it they can they can handle it but i was just like how lucky we all are that we can just like contact people whenever we want and it's just awesome um and like how cool is this by the way like we're recording live podcasts streaming. like live streaming and chatting to rebecca i'm messaging you oh wow is that what's happening yeah oh that's awesome Um, so yeah, so she calls from New York and that happens and then, oh, and then Jess goes to a party at the apartment of one of Suzanne's This is my favorite bit of the whole book. Seriously? No, only because Jess gets away. She gets (laughs) drunk and she's like, I've actually left myself a note that I need to read the dialogue of the party because it's so outrageous. All right. Read your, read your little bit from the book. No, hang on. Um, so what we're doing, well, where we were at was Jessica has been left devastated. Yeah. Elizabeth Lavalier is missing. Like, everyone's at, like, peak drama. And, and and Suzanne, actually, we find out at the end of this scene that Suzanne has it and it's in her pocket. And there's a sign where she fingers it in her pocket. I says, really, I'm so annoyed that that fingering has ruined the actual term for fingering because there's yeah. no other way to describe yeah. that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We've like, said fingering so many times in the last five minutes. <laughs> okay, it's ba- basically a dangling necklace. Thank you, Rachel. Oh, amazing. Serious, I, think, I think I Googled it, but I still just wasn't sure. Thank you so much, Rachel. So we, we do have a definitive answer. A lavalier is a dangly necklace. Yes. Which is good okay. to know. So it's, it's peak drama uh, because Jess has gone to um, – Make out with Pete and he's not interested. Um, and Suzanne has stolen Elizabeth's necklace. And she's so, fingering it in her pocket and saying, pocket. oh, hang on. It's a necklace with dangly slash points. So it must be have to be pointy. Very and antique, antique looking. looking. You guys are bomb. You, yeah, this is amazing because when I first read Lavalier, I all I could picture was, because there was no Google in those days, all I could picture was I had a friend who had like a um, star sign necklace. Um, and it was just like a long little panel, a little golden panel. Yeah, and that's all I, ever I thought, thought it was a panel. I thought it was kind of like a, like a strip of some sort of metal. But that's also just because that's what was on the cover of the of the books as well. Um, so the lovely is gone. Um, Suzanne is fingering it in her pocket, and she says, "Ooh, a pretty little trinket." 
And that's when we first know that Suzanne is actually evil. Creepy. So that's always fun to know. So that's all out of the bag because she's horrible. Then Liz is supposed to be babysitting Teddy Collins, whose name changes in... Yeah, it in Confidential. Freddie. Um, no, his age changes. Oh, okay. Um, so he, he's, she, uh, Elizabeth is supposed to go and babysit Teddy Collins and, um, Suzanne manages to convince her to not do this. And then she shows up to babysit Teddy Collins. And this part of the book just broke my heart because she was so nice to Teddy when she arrived and Mr. Collins leaves her there. And then the second Mr. Collins leaves, she turns on Teddy and like won't read him stories or hang out with him. And his little eyes fill with tears. He's so upset because he thinks that she's here to like have a rad time because we've missed the part where he has, she's come over um, because Elizabeth had to drop something off at, um, something for the Oracle to Mr. Collins's place. And he's outside shirt off. Yeah. Sun streaming down. He's oh, and one of my favorite outfits from this is that he's wearing white running shorts and a red bandana and his bare body is like I can really, listening. I can picture that like, except for like the whole Robert Redford And when thing. I was reading that, I was just like, oh, I want to put my mouth on his mouth. <laughs> but also... What kind of a dad wears that outfit? It's so highly it's unacceptable. Very it's so it's so 80s. 80s. And also, he's not Ralph Macchio. We're not in the Karate Kid. You know, when you said the bandana, I'm like, Karate Kid. Totally Karate Kid. Just not okay. You, you No shirtless. If you're going to wear a bandana, you also have to wear a shirt. I think that's the, that's well, the, the rule. Well, the thing that upset me about Suzanne showing up in his backyard unannounced was that she would like flop down on like a sun lounge. She's like, I'm going to have a sun oh. And then like hose herself down. And she's like, do you mind if I grab a drink from the hose? And she's hosing herself down. And she's like, oh, oh I'm all wet. Oh. Oh. We're like, you're the worst. You're the worst person. Just oh, so bad. So yeah, little, little, uh, what's his name? has come out and seen her do that and he's gone, oh my God, there's a chick in my backyard and she's like naked. Yeah. So then she shows up to babysit and he's like, uh-huh. Yeah, there you Let's go. be mates. And she's not. She's not being mates. No, she's, she's really, really that mean to boy. Him. And like, I, like, can we play? She's like, fuck off. I really hated that. That's horrible because it's, you know, when your parents leave you alone with someone that you don't know and they turn out to be a mega biatch, that's really quite a horrific experience. Um, so basically she throws herself at Mr. Collins. He's not having a bar of it. Um, she gets very cranky about this and then does what every girl in Sweet Valley does, which is, oh, I got rejected. I'm going to tell everyone he tried to rape me. Yeah. So she's been there all night. She's been going through his stuff. She's been like ignoring the child. She's been in the bath for like an hour and he's, and she's gone trying to look for dirt on Mr. Collins so she can use it against him because she's a manipulative bitch. Yeah, well, she's like, you know. Um, and so she goes home to Elizabeth and she's, like, ripped open her shirt to make it look like he's attacked her. Yeah. Um, and Elizabeth is like, oh, yeah, that probably didn't happen, though. And then she's saying, don't you believe me? And then, like all good girls should, Elizabeth says, well, no, if you say it's true, then... I believe you. Yeah. Because he's come home from the ba from his date. I swear he was out with a woman. And she's like put the music on and she's like unbuttoned her blouse and pretended to be asleep. And he's like, I'm not having any of this. This is not cool. And she's like, I can't believe you don't want me. <laughs> and she's just like gone Hulk mode, like absolutely lost her goddamn mind. She's like, I will get revenge on you. There's no way that you were going to say no to me. Um, and yeah, walks home. He's, he tries to drive her home cause you know, he's a good dude. Yeah. So on the way home, she's like ripping her shirt and she gets into Elizabeth and she, and Elizabeth's like, what's wrong? She's like, Oh, I can't tell you. I'm so ashamed. And I'm like, this is making me murderous. It made me so angry. Another thing that just while we're on the topic of Mr. Collins, there is no such thing as a gorgeous young single dad teacher who looks like Robert Redford. That just doesn't happen. Like, on what planet is there a gorgeous... I don't know, I'm trying to think. It just doesn't happen. Like, I used to be a teacher, right? And they just get snapped up within 20 seconds. If there's a gorgeous, lovely, yeah, young, true. single dad teacher. Yeah. They're just like... And also, they have the smorgasbord of options. You probably would. You know, 95% really. of the people that work in schools are women. It's just like, ah, <laughs> oh, just 
I'll just take my pick. Like, it's just such an unrealistic character. That's just my little beef because with that bit. Because he's for quite a long time. Yeah, ages and ages. ages. There was a Nora Dalton thing, wasn't there, with Mr. Yeah, Collins? I think that's later on. Um, but the fact that he he knows what Suzanne is doing. And yeah. he's like, I want no part of this because this is only going to end poorly. Yeah. And she's like... I will not take no for an answer. This is terrible. How could you do this to me? So, of course, Elizabeth is sitting there going, no, 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 you can tell me. This is fine. Like, you're in a safe yeah. space now. And she's like, Mr. Collins tried to rape me. And Elizabeth's like, huh? Yeah, not so Like, much. I don't, like, I can see that you're upset and I don't want to doubt you or your word, but that's not the Mr. Collins that I know. No. And so the kids at school are super divided as to whether or not he did it. Yeah, half the people are like, Pro he's Collins. a creepy motherfucker. Yeah, and also, you know what? He shouldn't have been at the picnic. This is where I come back to him being at the picnic. Shouldn't have been there. Bad move. Unprofessional. Don't be around students when you shouldn't be, when they're jumping around in their he's swimmers. And yeah, not cool. Um, so he takes a leave of absence from the school. And you know what really gives me the shits? Because... No, nothing else has given me the shits in this book so far. Aside uh, from everything aside else. Aside from the entire book itself. So, Mr. Wakefield, who is a lawyer, goes to talk to um, Mr. Collins. Mm -hmm. And he's like, this is a story that the young lady has told us uh, in this scenario. And Mr. Collins is like, you know what? It's not true, but I'm not going to publicly defend myself because people will just think whatever they want to think anyway. And I'm like... That's not the appropriate course of action. It's really not. If you really didn't do anything, you would say you really didn't do anything. And don't just let rumour abound and just let people believe what they want. Yeah, exactly. Because you rarely He's get... a lawyer. Like, how did Ned Wakefield not go, you know what? You have got a leg to stand on and I will help you. You also rarely get your name cleared for you. Like, you have to actually you have fight to get for out it. There and fight for it. Um, so then we move on to when Elizabeth buys... Suzanne a present to cheer her up um, and at this point she's doubting her because you know precious Mr. Collins you don't fuck with him yeah and also just I don't know she's felt weird about Mr. Collins and she's also felt weird about some of the things that that Suzanne has done like she doesn't understand how Suzanne could be a perfect swimmer one day and then not so good the yeah. next um, and so she buys her present and goes to put it in her suitcase and then dun 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 the lavalier, the lavalier that she fingered is now in, in suitcase. Suzanne's suitcase and so she was like well cool bitch stole my lavalier she's going down um, and so then we go to Lila's birthday party and Elizabeth and Suzanne have a showdown Liz calls Suzanne the biggest loser of all and I was like oh, bitch didn't she well, she did, but the funny thing was that Suzanne is not taking this lying down. She is, um, she understands that I that the game's probably up with Elizabeth, so she goes to Caroline Pierce, yeah, and says, you know, oh, Elizabeth hit her head the other day, and you remember how she was weird after that coma? She's kind of been a bit weird like that again. Suzanne doesn't know nothing about that, coma. she knows nothing, she, she would not nothing. know about that. They didn't even know each other, no, but anyway. The rumour gets around that Elizabeth's a little bit mental, so anything she could possibly say that's bad about Suzanne is just a result of her mentalness. And so the way that Elizabeth gets everyone to see Suzanne's true colours, and this was just so unrealistic, Winston accidentally on purpose spills his drink on Suzanne. She doesn't know that it's on purpose until later. Until later. Yeah. But Winston spills his drink on Suzanne, and she goes, oh my god, you idiot, and just treats him like a total... She loses her mind. Like, the, the perfect Suzanne mask slips and she's like, yeah, just really horrible to Winston. And horrible. that's, and, and because she yelled at Winston because he spilled a drink on her, everyone is all of a sudden like, oh, Mr. Collins didn't try to rape you. Like, if you this, were like, no time. If this was any other situation, that would actually make me feel so angry. I'd be like, what? Like, what if he actually did try to rape her? Oh, and then someone spilled a drink on her and she yelled at them and they're like, well, obviously that guy didn't oh, rape you. Happened. That wouldn't have happened. This is But, you know, this is, like, the whole thing is just, like, don't lie about it when people, like, don't lie and say that people tried to rape you is the main thing. Um, hi, Christy. We've got our lovely friend. She's from Qatar, y'all. And she... It's a long way away from here. Is a fabulous, fabulous blogger as I well. I haven't seen her in the friend, longest Christy. time. She's the last pro blogger. Yeah, I saw Christy at last pro blogger. It was lovely. I think that's the first time we ever met, actually. That was wonderful. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, 
So Jess has had a lot more trouble with Pete. Yes. Um, so after the party, now I haven't read you the dialogue from the party, um, but I totally should. So um, she goes to like a New York teenager party and in that day, in those days like when I was reading this I'm like this is the most sophisticated did you thing. mark the page in it uh did you so get I unmarked it? the page no, 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 that's okay. <laughs> I should have written it down because I was like it's oh this is so funny so um Stacey had the book and read it and marked a page and then I saw a folded down page and it annoyed me but I can see it so I un- I knew that she wouldn't like it no I hated I- it so much because she you're you're a page turner down I, ne- I never used to be honestly oh, I, I never used to be and there's no, like, I used to read books like this, so I didn't crack the spine. Now I'm just like, gonna yeah, read some I, shit. I like, oh, that's it. Yeah, no, I found yeah. it. Oh, good. No, I didn't just magic. <laughs> <laughs> so, magic. <clears throat> while I get my valley on, oh, I've got I'm loving you, ladies. You're keeping me entertained in my editing cave. Oh, yay. That's I exciting. I haven't you for a long time. Oh, I'm glad so that you do some cool shit. So, Jessica shows up at this super um, lavish teenage um, apartment party. And all the kids are talking about what they're going to do when they come into their money. And one of them's like, Daddy says the only thing to do is to put it all into real estate. And someone's like, diamonds. When I come into my money, I'm putting it all into Into diamonds. diamonds. So Suzanne's friends are 16. Mm -hmm. They're all drinking champagne. They're all wasted. A tall, sleek brunette wearing an outfit that looks like silk pajamas got up as she walked in. And says, hi, I'm Evelyn. Um, It'd be Evelyn, wouldn't it be? Evelyn. 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 So as soon as everyone said hello to Jessica, um, they just went back to their conversations. So several of the boys eyed her appreciatively, you know, because she's Jessica Wakefield. Yeah. That's what happens. Um, And one of them's like, daddy says real estate makes more sense. Said a nasal voice blonde with pinched good looks. I feel like that's like Gwyneth Paltrow. It is kind of culture. <laughs> Pinched good looks. If I put grandmother's inheritance into the stock market, I could lose everything. Diamonds. Diamonds, darling. Diamonds. diamonds. Pipes to petite, petite redhead girl. When I come into my money, I'm putting it all into diamonds. Diamonds. <laughs> That's a new hashtag, guys. Hashtag diamonds. diamonds. Um, oh, Simon, don't be so crass, says the other one. I pretty much have never, never said the word crass when I was 16. These people were all so sophisticated. It seemed impossible that they were the same age as she. They all appeared so much older. Quickly, she downed her champagne, and just as quickly, her glass was refilled. She actually passes out in a bathroom. Yeah, and then and wakes ends up in a cab. In a cab. Like, how hot is that? Oh, My awkward. boyfriend has an apartment in the village. I usually stay there. Mm. Um, so pretty much everybody's like so out of Jessica's league, but she's still so keen on getting Pete to notice her that she will do just about anything. But every single time they come together, he's just not interested until, until one time he takes her out into like a handsome cab around Central Park. Yeah. And she's like snuggling up to him going, you know, if this was a movie, you would have kissed her. (laughs) And he's like, do you always think you're in a movie? She obviously always thinks she's in a movie. It's Jessica Wakefield, Stole My Wedding Song, bitch. Oh, the fan of the opera. I will never forgive her for that, ever. No, so, honestly, she's, like, so into Pete, and he's just so not into her. So he takes her back to the apartment where she's like, do you want a drink? And he's like, yeah, no worries. And she pours him a brandy. Out of all the things to drink in the Devlin's apartment, she pours him a brandy. brandy. And then she breaks the glass. Shit, Shit goes down. And then he's like, you know what, bitch? Let's do this and starts making out with her and she's like, Yes! Finally. But then she pulls a Jessica Wakefield and she's like, No, no, I don't want this. Stop. Well he's starting to get a little bit fresh. Like she wanted oh, well I don't know what I don't know what she, she wanted, she wanted yeah. to be made out with. Yeah. And then as soon as he started making out with her, she was like, No, thank you. I think I've even written down uh what he said and what she said because I was like, uh, excuse me. Um so he's Absolutely not keen on her, but in the after a brandy, yeah, after a brandy, after one brandy, after I mean, a brandy, she's not happening. Just anybody's, really. Yeah, no. So um, he says to her, uh, "Grow up. What kind of game did you think this was? You're not playing in the sandbox anymore. You're getting what you asked for, Jessica. Don't tell me this isn't what you wanted. You've been practically begging for it since the day we met. So it's fine for me to rape you because you've been begging for it." 
Um, so victim blaming. Didn't your mother so ever victim blaming? Didn't your mother ever warn you about playing with matches? Um, he says because he says don't bother telling anybody. It's my word against yours. You invited me up here. Yeah, you were desperate for me to make out with you. Now that I have. Also, just that line about didn't your mother ever tell you not to play with matches? It's like it was your mother's responsibility to teach you to not tease men. Like, fuck that. No. And that drives me insane because also, A, can a woman not change your mind? Oh, obviously a woman can. Yeah. Um, and also, um, the fact that he was like saying it's my word against yours. Yeah. Which happens to a lot of people. It really does. They might have wanted the yeah. interaction and then when it got too much for them to handle and the man wouldn't stop like it is her word against theirs um but she's still there to say hey stop, absolutely I don't want absolutely. absolutely so that's you know and this is the third person that this has happened to in 11 books i've actually been wondering though if it's if they're trying to be sort of like very moral and like don't play with fire if you don't want to get burned. Well, that was kind of the message for women back in the 80s was like yeah. if you don't want to get raped. Don't, don't wear don't. Suzanne's sexy exactly. dress. Exactly. If you don't want the man to rape you. Yeah, exactly. Which is just such a problematic message. I mean, back in the 80s, I'm sure it helped many women not doing that. But not then that. we're more evolved now and we're like, you know what? No, we can do what we like and women should be able to exist in the world as they are without fear. without fear. Yeah, exactly. So that's where we stand moralistically on this book. Um, so, so Stacey's written in capital letters, this book is making me so mad. <laughs> I really have. That was after Suzanne came home. She's like, I can't tell you what happened. I'm so ashamed. And you know, there really is women who would feel ashamed. Oh God. Yeah. Bisexual. And like, she's just making shit up. Yeah. It's just, it's horrific. Um, so we get to the end and Suzanne gets, found yeah, out. she gets mad at Winston and everybody realizes um, and then she's been lying. Jess gets home, tells Liz she has a wonderful time. No mention of the near rape. Well, she doesn't want to tell anyone about the ridiculous. fact that he's... Done. Because the, the Devlins come home because they... She they fight him. him. She fights him and they fall into like a glass coffee table. And the Devlins turn the light on at that moment. And they, they find them. But that, I mean, that never goes anywhere. That just kind of happens and then we don't yeah. talk about it. But there's absolutely nothing. He never gets in trouble. And Ned Jessica Wakefield. Jessica doesn't mention it to anybody. She says that it would be humiliating if everybody knew the truth. And Ned Wakefield is apparently very good friends with the dad. So I don't know where that would have ended up. I'm really not good with how this the whole book played just, out. And, and then wound up just kind of like, ah, oh, I don't know, bad things happen, hashtag I think they were bye. so keen to move on to the next section of the book that yeah. everything just completely stops and now we all focus on the fact that Stephen is depressed. So that's the new thing, is that Stephen is Stephen depressed, depressed and his relationship with Trisha slash Tricia is not going according to plan. She's being distant, not being terribly loving towards him. And so, you know, we find out in Sweet Valley 12, when love dies... Which is the biggest spoiler alert in the world. Oh, she doesn't even die. She doesn't die in that book. So no. Does she die in the next one? Yeah, I don't know if that's the next one, but she definitely dies. Um, I think we went through most of our notes. Outfits. Outf Wait, what's page 101? What happened there? Page 101. Oh, in this book, this is my favorite thing. Um, so it's a secondhand book and it's covered in glitter oh, lip gloss. Oh, yeah, it looks like someone's kissed it. Yeah, it's really cute. Where so as we were reading it, because it's secondhand. I got this from the Dewport Book Exchange on the Sunshine Coast. Uh, two bucks I paid for it, and I would have gotten 80 cents had I uh, bought it back. Yeah. This was one of the books that I bought. Do you remember way back in the very first episode when I said that I had a note in my purse of all the episodes, of all the issues that I yeah. had? And if I ever went into a book store, I would check what they had compared to what I needed, and this was one of them. I swapped... Flowers in the Attic. No. <laughs> we just recorded Flowers in the Attic We just before. recorded Flowers in the Attic, and I swapped all of my Virginia Andrews collection, which probably had about 15 or 20 books in it, for Sweet Valley Hello. All Amazing. the ones that I didn't have. But yeah, that one is full of glitter lip gloss, which was my favorite thing ever. I was like, oh, girl, you totally overdid it, but I love you, because it smeared all the shit on, on page 110. I'm like, oh, honey. Ah. Um, so outfits we had, you know. The there wasn't that many. I feel as though the outfits have... Lit. I think my favourite one ever was um, Elizabeth's high-necked Victorian blouse with a velvet skirt and her hair was in a fancy French braid. I with was a like, flower in it. And I was just like, well, have fun on the Church of Latter-day Saints compound, baby. Amazing. <laughs> How are many you husbands are you going to have? Are you wearing your regulation underwear? I hope so. Um, also, uh, 
Pete McCafferty was wearing white slacks and a blue Lacoste shirt that hugged his muscular chest, and it looked like he just stepped off a yacht. <laughs> She's written a gay yacht. <laughs> No, because it really does seem like in the 80s that would have been like the epitome of, of preppy rich boy cool. Yeah, definitely. I just I just don't know any men that wear white pants these days. It's just not so much a, no, a situation. I've never really thought about it. Um, the food, because we always have to discuss all the food. We discuss the food. That That's a thing. Really high. They had barbecued spare ribs, potato salad, and a lemon chiffon pie um, the very first night that Suzanne was there. And Enid puts a thin layer of catsup on the, her hamburger bun at the school picnic. Can we talk about catsup? Slash ketchup. Yes. Catsup what, is definite. What? Catsup is different to ketchup. Ketchup has more sugar. I thought catsup was a bit darker. It was like a... Is it just like one of those, like, colloquial, depends on where you're from in the country kind of I term? actually think catsup might be different. Is catsup different? Is catsup, catsup different to ketchup? Please, can somebody tell if, us? If someone could figure I that really out for us, that would be amazing. Know. I really don't know. Because we've never called it ketchup or catsup. We just no tom tomato sauce. Tomato sauce. Tomato sauce. Tomato sauce. Do you remember when we had the little um, sausage pastries? Yeah. The Elizabeth and Jessica sausage pastries. <gasps> oh and my I, God, they were so good. They were really delicious. And we had I, so much yeah, sauce with them. We, we served them with tomato sauce. because. We um, and then Elizabeth had scrambled eggs for breakfast. because and she we was not hungry. She couldn't eat them. Always need to know what she's having for the old brekkie. Yes. Um, that's about it. We would love to hear your thoughts on this issue and what do you remember reading as a kid? Use the hashtag Sweet Teen Club or hashtag Diamonds, Diamonds. to let us know that you listened to this episode or hashtag Don't Point Your Avocado at Me. That's is a another great one. Hashtag. Uh, do they cry rape and date rape storylines bug you? And do you know what happens with Stephen and I know. Tricia what slash Trisha? What is the secret that Trisha is keeping from Stephen? You can find me, Carly, drama. at Smaggle and Stacey at Veggie Mama. And please do tag either one of us on Twitter because we're a teeny bit lazy with the hashtag. And are you upset with the storyline that built up to a massive crescendo and then just went and then nothing happened. It disappeared just, like a pop bubble. Not good. And there was nothing and they were just like, let's move on to Stephen. Why is he so upset? Who cares that Jessica was Because raped? he's the most repressed gay Susan man in the history of the world. He's going to be gay anyway, don't worry about Thank it. Thank you so much for listening guys. Rachel and we'll... knows Trisha's secret. <laughs> we'll chat to you next week. Bye. Bye. I waved at them, but I'm actually saying goodbye to the people on the podcast. Oh, so we're done with the podcast recording. We're going to run away now. And Rachel says, I remember Trisha's secret. Dun, dun, dun. It's I cancer, know. guys. It's cancer. But don't tell anyone on the she's podcast. She's got leukemia. She's got, she's got leukemia. But she tries to break up with Stephen because she thinks that it would be better for him if he doesn't know that she's ill. Just, that it's never a good idea. Him. Don't try and do that. We're going to bugger off, um, but we'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much for everyone. It was lovely. We had so many beautiful comments and people participating, which we love. Um, so, yeah, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.